Hey everyone, it's Colt. First up, a very quick announcement. My React course is almost done. I've been getting a lot of comments asking about when it's coming out. Stay tuned to this channel. I'll post about it here first. It's about two weeks away. Okay, so usually I lock myself in a room, I talk to my computer, and I try and teach you something I do know. This video is different. I'm gonna talk about things I don't know as of right now. But don't worry, I'm not gonna try and teach you them. That might be interesting to see. Of course, there are many, many, many things I don't know. I don't know how to grow facial hair, mustache, or beard. Nope, can't do it. I don't know how to keep my houseplants alive, or for that matter, my friendships. It's sad, but it's true. That's not what I'm talking about. I want to talk about the things I don't know as of right now in 2019 that have to do with code, programming, web development. And trust me, this video could be hours and hours long. I'm just trying to keep it to the most important things that I don't know. So I was largely inspired by a blog post written by Dan Abramov. If you don't know Dan, he is, the, I don't know, one of the big celebrity top tier developers. He works at Facebook on the React team. Really, really smart guy. Uh, good teacher as well. And he wrote this blog post on his great blog, Overreacted, sharing the different things he doesn't know. He's an expert who is being honest and almost vulnerable, talking about the things he doesn't know. So I thought this would be worthwhile for me to do because often in my videos, my courses, my job is to look like I know what I'm doing. Nobody wants to watch somebody on video teach something and stumble through it, look like a moron, Google stuff. But the reality is that half the time I don't know or I don't know what I'm doing. Now, maybe not half, but what you see is far, far more polished than the reality. You don't see my constant Google searching and errors and bugs and slapping around my computer. I edit that out. And the web development world today is as fractured and cacophonous as it's ever been. You open up one Reddit post, somebody asks what they should learn first, they get 50 different recommendations, all of them claiming the other people are completely wrong and they don't know what they're talking about. It's overwhelming, it's huge, there's just so much, and it's enough to make you sick and to make your cat secondhand sick as well. It's just, it's a mess. And it actually reminds me of my first attempt at a career. I didn't wanna be a developer or a teacher originally. My plan was to move to New York City, become a music producer, work in a studio, have my own label. I've been a musician my whole life. Somehow I moved to New York and I scammed my way into a job I was not at all equipped for at a record label run by people I idolized, working with bands I wanted to just be around. I showed up my first day at work and it did not go well. The people who were there knew so much more than me. They could talk about albums I'd never heard of for hours on end. I felt lost, I felt inadequate. You might even use one of my least favorite words, imposter, it felt like an imposter. In a single recording session, I would sit there and write down every band I'd never heard of. They would list 50 bands in a day. And I honestly, this part's true, I went home, I bought a journal, and I tried to write everything down, every band, every album. I took notes, I made massive playlists, I spent nights and nights listening to these bands, trying to build the knowledge and the know-how and just the language to have discussions with these people, with my coworkers. It did not go well. I burned myself out. Uh, I love music, but that job clearly didn't work out for me for many reasons, chief of which is that I was actually never paid, but that's a different story. But as I was reflecting on some of the messages I get from my students, some of the conversations I have with them, it reminded me of the same experience I had trying to become a producer. I see students who are so overwhelmed, they are trying to learn every single thing at once, they feel inadequate, they feel like they suck because they haven't mastered the 1,001 things you must know to get a developer job in 2019. It's not a real book, but it honestly could be. And it can be disheartening, it can be frustrating, not to mention the fact that some of these band names already sound like JavaScript libraries. Can, CanJS, I think that's already one. Um, Noi, that could work, Noi.js, maybe for testing. Suicide, actually, I think that was the working title of WordPress before it was released. Yeah, okay, that was a bad joke, sorry. So learning stuff is great. I, I'm not trying to say, you know, don't learn new things, don't be curious. That's a huge part of being a developer. But what's not great is this behavior, this attitude, the Pokemon trainer attitude. I've got to catch them all before I can do anything. I need to master this massive checklist or else I'm never getting a job or I'm never going to build anything worthwhile. And that's just not how it works. In my opinion, part of the issue 
is how we talk about programming, how we talk about new technologies. Something's announced. Potato.js team announces new library, Corn.js. There's a whole industry that pops up. I'm part of it too, for the record. Later the same day, an hour later, there could be a post. Why learning Corn.js will change your code and your life and your career and your marriage forever. Learn it right now. Then the very next morning, if you don't already know Corn.js by now, you're a worthless moron who should give up on coding forever. What are you doing? Then the tides inevitably shift, maybe a week later, for the love of all things holy, stop using Corn.js. It's the year 2019, not 1999. Wake up. So maybe a little bit dramatized. But I think we've all seen this sort of post before. Or there's a conference and a speaker announces a potential maybe one day down the line, 10 months from now, new feature. All that it takes is just the, the hint of something new. And there's new blog posts being written. There are YouTube videos. There are courses that are going to be on sale a week later. And like I said, I'm part of this, right? I know that I'm guilty. There's a whole industry of people who sell courses and they make more money if people buy more topics, they wanna to learn more things. They try and collect 150 different courses so they can finally feel like a developer. So that's part of why I wanna put this video out. Things I don't know as of 2019, there are a lot, as I've mentioned. The first one is probably the biggest one, Vue.js. I do a lot of JavaScript, a lot of front end stuff, React, Angular, never really done Vue. I've done uh, maybe one, two tutorials a couple of years ago. I'm sure it's changed drastically since then. I couldn't write a single line from memory. All I could do is tell you at a very high level how it compares to React or Angular as far as its goals and structure, but that's it. Next up, WebGL, graphics. Oh, that is a whole mystery to me. I've seen some beautiful applications, some really cool things made with WebGL, but I, I am so out of depth there. I don't even know where to begin. Okay, moving on, native applications. A whole subset of app development. Uh, I've done some mobile stuff, some Objective-C and Swift and Android, but never made apps or even just done a tutorial for apps that run natively on a Mac, on a PC. Don't know anything. Okay, this is the one I'm most nervous about for my students. I get asked about Docker all the time. Are you gonna make a Docker course? Can you include a section on Docker? I am so out of my depth with Docker. Kubernetes, I mean, what what is that word? I, as far as I know, Kubernetes is the cute pet term I used to refer to my cat when she's yawning in the morning and being adorable. Good morning, kitty. Are you my sleepy little Kubernetes? This whole world of DevOps and containers, I don't know very much about at all. Now that might change. This is one of the, the topics I, I have on my list, but at the moment, oh, I don't know a thing. Next up, I do a lot of Node. Uh, for a couple of years now, I've been teaching Node. Most of the time, just pure plain Node or some Express stuff or a variant of Express that we sort of add on to build our own mini framework. But there are tons of frameworks now that weren't around when I first started teaching Node. Things like Sales, Koa, Kraken, Derby, Mojito, it used to be Express was pretty much the only thing, the, the end-all be-all. Now things are changing a bit, so this will probably change for me. I'll end up picking some of these up eventually, but at the moment, no, no. Next up, databases. Obviously there are hundreds of databases out there. I'd say I feel most comfortable with Mongo. Uh, I feel pretty good with most of the top SQL databases, things like MySQL or Postgres, uh, but I have no experience with some of these I've listed. CouchDB, Neo4j, Spark, some very trendy, very useful things. I haven't done anything with them. Next, a whole group of programming languages. Functional languages like Elixir and Scala. Yes, I've seen hundreds of blog posts and videos about why I should be learning them. Uh, haven't done it. I have friends who I talk to who are mainly JavaScript developers who have gone down the rabbit hole of Scala or Elixir, and I can't hang out with them anymore because it's all they talk about. I'm just kidding. I don't hang out with them because I can't keep my friendships alive. The last thing I put on the list, TensorFlow. This is a big one as well. I get a lot of comments, a lot of messages asking if I'll teach this, if I'll expand my Python course or include a new one to talk about TensorFlow, among other topics. Uh, I think this piece of clip art I've included encapsulates my response at this point. Uh, it's on the list. I, I, this is probably one that I'll definitely pick up this year, but at the moment, I could tell you basically what TensorFlow is, and that's it. So that's a very small group of things I don't know. There are many, many more gaps in my knowledge. Plus, there are probably thousands of things I don't know that I don't know yet. There are so many. 
Now, I don't want to sound like, you know, you need to learn one thing and stick with that and that's it for the rest of your life. Of course, things change. Technology has changed for a reason. Browsers change. New features are added in. Um, trends change. The types of apps people build change. The job market changes. Just to give you an idea, this was the stack I taught at my first boot camp where I taught in 2013. I don't teach any of these. Well, I teach Postgres sometimes now, but otherwise, I don't teach Ruby or Rails or CoffeeScript or Backbone or Haml or less. None of that. Although I will say I do miss Rails. I mean, as much as people hate on it these days, I could build an app in Rails right now probably twice as fast as I could build something with Node or with Express. So my point in showing you this is that, yes, we do need to grow. We need to continue to learn new skills. That's part of being a developer. But that's very, very different than starting out and trying to grow and expand and become a huge sponge and take everything in at the very start. It's a process and it takes time. I really don't want this to sound too preachy. I don't want it to sound like I'm talking down or condescending or proselytizing here. But if I had to summarize my views, I would say learning new stuff is obviously very important, but it's not everything, especially when you're starting out. You don't need to go nuts learning every little thing that comes around, every blog post that mentions a new potato JS or corn JS or asparagus JS. It's much more important to build expertise somewhere and build your confidence so that you can then go learn new things when needed. It's more about being confident, feeling able to learn something when you need to. Okay, so I'll be quiet. That's most of what I want to say. Clearly, I have a long way to go. New things to learn, new things to teach eventually. It's, it's a constant process. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave a comment, and please let me know what on earth is Kubernetes. I mean, please, anybody help me here.